Maria, we've got Maria Uber, Crafting Chef, and welcome to our first show of DIY in Nine. Today's show is going to feature me, of course, Herbal Crafting Chef, Got Maria, and Kathy Di Domenico with Royal Funky Junk. Also featuring Chris Hunter with Creating with Chris and more. You guys, there's going to be more people, and we're going to be on every Sunday, 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time for six months or more. Stay tuned, it's going to be so fun, you guys. You're not going to believe what you see. Did you know Valentine's Day is in just a couple of weeks? Do you have your outfit ready? If not, we can help you out. You can find this beautiful raspberry sorbet lace top along with our pink tank and raspberry sorbet necklace and earring set along with many other beautiful items at www.presentationsbypatty.boutique where we can help dress you and your home with originality, comfort, and confidence. Introducing the new Zulon Press Book, Enlightened, Awake, and Alive, by Marcellus Curtis. Who can truly make sense of reality? What is the purpose of our lives? And how do we go about seeking the answers to the innumerable questions surrounding that purpose? Rather than continuing to ask questions, why not try imagining possibilities? Imagine looking at life from a new perspective, and realizing that things happen because God is ultimately in control. Imagine finding the answers you've been looking for to make sense of it all. Imagine understanding more and finally having the opportunity to put the puzzle pieces together. You just might find your own answers as author Marcellus Curtis did. Enlightened, Awake and Alive shares the journey Curtis took to discover the answers to life's perplexing questions and attempts to make sense of reality for others who are just as curious about their purpose in life. Everything that happens in the world must have a reason. Life must have a purpose. The time has come to be enlightened, to wake up and live as you discover the divine plan God has for your life. Today is a new day to be awoken to new ideas and realities. Enlightened, Awake, and Alive is available at Christian bookstores and online. Purchase it today. mushrooms you guys it's kind of hard healthy month kind of uh, this is brain healthy so hard healthy brain healthy we're doing it all I wanted to show you there's something called the doctrine of signatures and many many eons ago it's story time guys they used to have um, all kinds of scientists and herbologists and people indigenous people from all over the planet that would find plants that resembled a body part and they realized from much research that plant that resembled a body part was good for that body part so we're going to show you lion's mane mushroom so this resembles a brain all right so looks like a brain like half the hemisphere here okay that's what it looks like it is fuzzy, all right? Um, it looks like, just like how a brain looks, it's so crazy. Um, and it's good for your brain, okay? It has so many medicinal properties to it. Now when you eat it, it tastes between crab and steak, I would say. And it is the most amazing flavor I think I've ever had. Um, on a plant, I, I I cannot get over how amazing it is, and I'm not a big mushroom person. I don't like 
regular button tasting mushrooms. I never liked them, okay? So, you guys, this is one of the most healthiest plants out there for your brains right now, for your brain, your brains, okay? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna slice this and we're just gonna make some um, lion's mane steak. Like steak, okay? So you guys, these are good. They help grow neurons, okay? They're just amazing. They're anti-inflammatory. They are antioxidant. There is so many health benefits to these things, you guys. There's a list a mile long that they're seeing. They're shown to uh, stop the proliferation of cancer cells, um, prevent cancers, certain types of cancers, according to the research. And we're not here to treat, diagnose, or any of that. I'm not a doctor. This is for entertainment purposes only. But you guys do your own research. Amazing, amazing things, okay? Anti-aging. It's supposed to help with cognitive um, impairment. It's supposed to help with almost everything that a brain would do, okay? So I am putting some garlic powder and some black pepper and some Celtic sea salt. That is the best salt to use. It's got the most minerals. It almost mimics the mimic the, the minerals in our body, okay? And so, you guys, this, according to the studies, have shown to help with diabetic nerve pain, um, helping regulate blood sugar, blood pressures, like blood, you guys. If you can think it, it's probably one of the qualities in it. It's just crazy, okay? Um, so what we're going to do, we're just going to saute this here and then I'm going to put a little press on it and that way the press will help it cook a little bit faster. I cut up some more also, so I'm going to, um, cook more of this later on. So if you press this down, you guys, then it just cooks it, it flattens it more. This is supposed to help with even dementia. It helps blood flow. So there's so many things to this particular plant, you guys. It's one of the new founded superfoods, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna also, I made some quinoa. Now, quinoa is, most people think it's a grain and it's not a grain. What it is, it's a protein, okay? Quinoa is a protein. It's also got anti-cancer properties. It's got many, many vitamins and nutrients in it. And um, you guys, if you have celiac disease, not gluten intolerant, but actual celiac, then you can usually take stomach um, quinoa, okay? So on the quinoa, all you have to do is put one cup of water, one and a half cups of water, boil it up, and then put one cup of quinoa, bring it to a boil, and then put the lid on and reduce the heat for like 15 minutes, and it's done. Now, quinoa, they had this for many, many, many years, and um, the Inca tribe used to um, consider this as sacred, all right, because of the healing properties in it so many healing properties, vitamins and nutrients. So we're gonna have our lion's mane over our quinoa. And all you need, like I said, this is one of the easiest things that you can cook, um, like the fastest dinner and the most healthy, okay? So we're using heart healthy olive oil since I'm on the heart healthy kick here. All right, this month and next month, we're doing that. Um, I'm gonna just turn this over. Now, lion's mane mushroom, you can eat them raw. You can cook them. Uh, you can have them in smoothies. You can dry them. You can, you can make them um, as tea. You can use them as tea, okay? They're also good for your gut. They, they're supposed to help with H. pylori, okay? Um, 
So they're good for your gut, they're good for your brain, they're good for your heart. Now, we've got olive oil. Olive oil is also anti-inflammatory, all right? Try to get the olive oil in the glass jars, okay? So it doesn't get all the outside UVs, all right? We're gonna have quinoa, so that's a healthy, healthy protein. And then I'm just gonna make a quick little salad. And this salad, I have a cucumber here. This is an organic cucumber, all right? So cucumber is a fruit. It's not a vegetable. People think it's a vegetable, it's a fruit. We're gonna have some healthy, healthy, healthy oregano. And oregano is antimicrobial, antibacterial, antiviral. This is like antibiotics right here, okay? So we have fresh oregano, and then we have um, red onion. Now red onion is healthier even than a white onion, okay? And it has um, stronger compounds in it that help with um, all kinds of diseases. It helps with supposedly um, because of the, the high vitamin C content and the quercetin it has in it. And that's one of the supplements that they were telling us to use during Rona was quercetin. All right, so you really, you want, anything purple, red, dark, okay, is better than the white, okay? So super healthy, super good for you. And it has the elicins in it. It's very good for you. Um, many vitamins and nutrients. We're gonna throw some of this um, oregano in. And you guys, I'm not even cutting it, I'm just peeling it. Like, I'm pinching it to bruise it, all right? So this is how I'm bruising it. And I wanna keep it pretty chunky and whole, basically. I'm gonna keep these stems because every day we make um, a tea stock pot and we use that. Every day I'll use the peelings from the onions, I'll use peelings from my grapefruit, from my orange, and then I'm just going to, we're gonna have cucumbers now, like I said, cucumbers, they're a fruit, not a vegetable. We're gonna have a cucumber and an onion salad to go with our lion's mane. And cucumbers, you guys, it's like having a diuretic, okay? They will keep you hydrated, all right? So if you feel a little dehydrated, eat a cucumber, all right? So cucumber is another superfood. So I don't know if you know that. Cucumber is a superfood. Um, red onions are one of the superfoods, and so is lion's mane. Also, you guys, so is quinoa. So we are having this protein-packed, nutrient dense meal that's gonna take us literally like 10 minutes to have to cook. So 10, 15 minutes for the um, quinoa. That the suggestion is 10 to 15 minutes. Um, one cup of quinoa, one and a half cups of water, and you cook it for 10 to 15 minutes on low covered. And um, we're gonna put the same spices. I'm gonna put some some garlic powder. I could put fresh garlic, but I'm just gonna use garlic powder, black pepper, some Celtic sea salt. These have like 87 to 92 minerals that mimic our body's minerals. And we have cayenne pepper. This is Aztec cayenne pepper. And this is like a duality drug that, like if your blood vessels need open, it helps open them. They need clotted, they, it helps clot them. So it's like an amazing um, herb that God put on this planet for us. Very, very medicinal, okay? We eat a lot of it, we try to help ward off sickness, all right? Now, like I said, okay, olive oil is anti-inflammatory, so we're gonna throw some olive oil on here, just like so, and then we're gonna use red wine vinegar, red wine vinegar, it's a little good for your gut microbes, okay? And uh, that's about it, all right? So, a fresh, Fresh oregano in here, all right? Usually I'm gonna put it in a bigger bowl and so I can um, work this around, okay? And sometimes we put tomato. Now, depending on how you feel, um, 
Sometimes we put the tomato. Tomato is good because of the lycopene in it. It's very good. It helps, they say, studies show, um, with men for prostate cancer to help reduce chances of getting it. But if you have like arthritis, then it's a nightshade and it could make inflammation and cause pain because of the acidity, okay? And so if you get heirloom tomatoes, not so much, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn this over one time here. And um, it, so it looks kind of rubbery. I'm telling you guys, so if you put this up really high heat and just sear it, it's amazing. Or you can cook it to where it's a little more moist. It's like a steak. It tastes like a steak. That's what it tastes like. So that's what we have. And um, super easy, super, super duper easy to make. Um, sometimes I put feta cheese in here, Greek olives. But for today, we're just going to put this in it. And um, I wanted to show you guys how to make a heart brain healthy meal in like 10 minutes or less, okay? So you can do it, everybody can do it. It's so easy. Do some research on this, it's amazing. You guys, um, it's just amazing. You can't get much better than this, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plate it up a little bit. Let me put some out. So um, it's just so healthy. Um, if you have high blood sugar, like maybe diabetes, and you have to watch your um, sugar, like if you're going to have rice, they tell you to have basmati. It has a lower GI index. Um, you can have quinoa the same. So it has a lower GI index. So it's a little safer for some of the people that have to watch that. So that's according to the studies. So here's what you would do. You, you guys, this, I'm telling you, it tastes so amazing. Um, this has been known, the studies have shown to help with um, oh, so many things, ADD, like there's just so many things um, that it's good for. And so you can't go wrong. You really can't. There's not much that that you can do to um, get something better. You can, this is like one of the best, best, strongest, most potent antioxidant um, and uh, nutrient-packed meals right here. Brain healthy, heart healthy. And then, you guys, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sprinkle on a little sriracha just for a little bit of zing. And my hubby likes a little bit of uh, spice, just a little. So, there you have it. So, we have superfood cucumber, superfood red onion, superfood quinoa, and a superfood lion's mane mushroom. You guys, bon appetit, try this. Please try this. You cannot go wrong. And your heart and your brain will thank you. You guys, this is Maria with God Maria, Herbal Crafting Chef. Thank you for being here at DIY and Nine. Are you looking to add a little more ambiance and dress up your Valentine's decor? We can help you with that. At Presentations by Patty Boutique, we have a wide variety of Valentine's decor, as well as an assortment of candles, both battery operated and traditional. You can check these and many other products out at our website at www.presentationsbypatty.boutique. So next up we have Kathy D. Domenico with Royal Funky Junk. 
Thank you, Maria. Hello, everyone. My name is Kathy DiDomenico. I am the owner creative designer of Royal Funky Junk. And here at Royal Funky Junk, I like to take thrift store finds and flip them into custom pieces of home decor, all with a bit of sparkle. And today I'm going to show you how to make over a candle. You're gonna need a candle, some fancy ribbon, some hot glue, and a mold. To start, I am going to take a high temp glue gun and I'm going to fill up a silicone mold with hot glue. I start off in the center and I just keep adding the glue until the glue fills in the entire mold. It will level itself out and fill up that mold. And then to make a candle pin, you're going to take a flat backed upholstery tack and just shove that right down into the center of the glue while it's still hot. And then just glue that in there. And while we let that dry, we're gonna move on to our candle. I have this beautiful gold sparkly candle that I got at the thrift store and I also have some beautiful sparkle ribbon. So I already pre-cut it and all I'm going to do is take some more hot glue and put a little bit right down the center of this ribbon and then I am going to center it on the candle and just wrap it all the way around until those two seams meet. See how pretty that is? It's very sparkly and glam. And it's just gonna zhuzh up these candles just a little bit. All of my creations get some type of sparkle and this is going to be no exception. So once your candle pin is dry, it will be clear and you simply just pop it right out of the mold and you can see it's just a hot glue candle pin. Nobody will ever know that this was a hot glue mold. So once I get that and it, and it gets firmed up after about 10 minutes, I went ahead and I took some black paint and I mixed it with a metallic copper paint. And I'm just going to paint my entire glue mold, the small brush. You want to do the front and the back of your candle pin. That's going to give it a nice 360 degree view because it doesn't lay flat to your candle because it's, it's a firm, they dry very firm, but you wanna make sure you get the front and the back fully covered. It might take two coats, so just keep doing that. And then once you have it all dry and both sides are painted, it's gonna look like this. It still has some bend to it, but not a lot. Once I have that, I'm gonna take this wax metallic paste and I'm going to squeeze some out of my craft paper here, grab a small brush, and all I'm gonna do is take a little bit of that metallic paste and this in this beautiful antique gold color and I'm just going to brush that all over very lightly, just brushing it over my glue mold. And you'll see it's just gonna bring out all those details and you're left with this old world type looking embellishment. Once you have that all set to go, it is time to put your candle pin into your candle and it is super easy. And this is why you wanna make sure that your tack is glued into there. You don't wanna glue it on top. You wanna to insert it into the glue while that candle pin is drying. After you have this all done, you're gonna find your candle I like to put the candle pins on the seam to cover up that seam. And you're just going to stick that down in there. And you can reuse these on any type of candle. This will also go on a real candle. This is a battery operated candle, but there you have it. Isn't it so pretty? I love it. It just zhuzhed it up just a little bit. And now for the fun part, it's all about the sparkle. I have these little pieces of bling. I did choose silver. This is a two-toned candle. It's got gold and silver, so I'm all about mixing my metals. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue. And I'm going to drop that right down in the center of the candle pin. And once it dries, you have this gorgeous 
custom boutique worthy style candle. I do have another one that I'd like to show you that I had made prior. This was a cross glue mold and I added some rhinestones, added a little bit of bling and together you can put these anywhere out inside your home and they just make a statement and they're so pretty and their molds come in so many various shapes and sizes. There really is no end to what you can create when you're making your very own candle pin. I hope that you guys enjoyed my segment today. Until next time, my friends, stay sparkly. And now we are back to Maria. Hey, everybody. Welcome to DIY and I. This is Maria with God Maria Herbal Craft Each Up. And I am here with Portia Russell. Portia is actually married to my nephew, Chris. So, Portia. Portia owns Daily Delights Miniatures and Crafts. And Portia, can you tell me, how did you come up with this name? So I was taking an OSL class in my church and we were talking about how the Bible is a book of love from the beginning to the end. And one of the, the things that stood out was when they said that we are God's miniature, or miniature delights. We are God's delights and he enjoys dwelling with us and being near us and being around us. It made me cry. And it's something that's always stuck in my head. So when I decided to create this business, I wanted to make sure that I was doing everything to his glory. And that was the first that stuck out. And so that is what my business is named. So it's totally based on your faith. Absolutely. I would not be able to do this without the Lord's creativity flowing through me and using my hands. So that it is definitely faith based. <laughs> okay. So you guys, Portia makes incredible clay miniatures as well as other crafts. She's going to show you how to make, I think, right? Yes. A clay earring. Look at this. This is a donut. Hello. Okay, <laughs> Portia, take it away. All right, so let me just explain to you guys a little bit of what I've got over here. It looks like a whole lot. Uh, I wanted to give you guys some options. Um, the tools, I don't know each name for each tool, guys, so just so you're aware. I've got some wire cutters, some needle nose pliers, uh, two different types of tweezers. toothbrushes. Tweezers, there you go. I don't know why I said pliers. <laughs> uh, this was the first toothbrush I ever used. I never had any professional tools, so I started using things that I found in my junk drawer. This is the first toothbrush I ever used. I moved on to these ones, which you can get on Amazon for about five bucks. Come in a pack of like 20. Um, this is a clay tool. It's got a little bit of stuff on it already. It's got a pointy end and a little flat. There's, I don't curve. know what that's called. Yeah. A little curve. <laughs> Curve swerve, curve swervy. I have toothbrush or toothbrush, uh, paint brushes for my pastels, which I just used one of my little um, cutters and just got that in there so that you can brush it onto your um, your products here. Then I have a ball tool, which is going to make the center. You could also use these small little clay cutters. Those come in packs. You can get those on Amazon as well. I also have my. Um, liquid clay and my gloss clay that goes on top a little bit goes a very long way all right we also oops we also have some findings over here for your earrings we have a fish hook we have this little one that which you, you're going to use the cutters to cut that so it doesn't go through the hole you also have some screw-in ones that you can use or you can make it a post earring um, i have some toppings that i put on them these ones i used were some a mixture of this one and this one over here um those you get those so on cool. amazon very cheap, they come in a variety of packs, or you can make your own with also polymer clay. Um, what I am using today is Sculpey Primo. I use translucent and Ecru to make the donuts themselves, and then the, uh, the red is gonna be for the frosting, which we use in this with your liquid clay. You're gonna chop it up real fine and smash that around until you get a consistency like this, and that's gonna be your frosting. It's got a weird texture, I just wanna show you so that no one thinks they're doing it wrong. It's liquid, but it's also solid at the same time kind of goopy yes okay all right that's what you're gonna frost your your donuts with so you're gonna start off with you're gonna mix these two together i use my pasta machine or my clay uh clay pasta machine you can get either one they'll both work perfectly fine um so you're gonna get your translucent and your ecru you're gonna mix those together condition them together until you get them nice and soft and solid together then you're gonna uh since you're doing earrings you want them to be an even size so you're gonna do uh two of these and you're just gonna flatten it out with your hands i do it in a circle like this then you're gonna get your ball tool poke it right in the middle that's gonna give you this then you can use another tool like this one to soften it out and make it all nice and smooth. You're gonna take your toothbrush to make texture all over the top and all over the bottom. That's like amazing. This, right? Okay. 
Then you're gonna take your pointy tool, make a line all the way around. Doesn't have to be perfect, you can also use foil. The foil will keep that line there for you. Okay. And then you're gonna use your pastels that you already put in a little thing. This is like a little paint uh, thing, okay. got it from the dollar, dollar store, comes in a pack of like 20. Uh, and then you're gonna brush your pastels on it. So you have that like pigment look. pastel. Absolutely, okay. like you're painting it. Some people do use paint, I, I prefer not to. Okay. Okay. Once that's done, you're going to take whichever finding you like. I chose the screw finding. I find that one stays in there a lot better. You're going to put that in whichever. It's a circle, so it doesn't really matter where you put it, okay. right? Bake it for five minutes. Once it's baked, you're going to take it out. It's going to look just like this. Then you're going to get the frosting that you already made. You're going to frost that over the top and then add any little um, things you want on here. I added glitter and the X's and O's and a few hearts. And then you're going to bake that one more time. Once it comes out of the oven, you're going to take your gloss with a, uh, where'd that paintbrush go? With a paintbrush. And you're going to put it on the top. And then this only needs a couple minutes to set. And then they're perfectly... Nice and shiny. So how long do you bake it for? You're going to bake it for about a half an hour on 265. Where you're baking it for five minutes, still the 265 just for five minutes. Portia, thank you so much. How can they find you? They can find me on Instagram and Facebook under Daily Delights Miniatures and Crafts. I also do requests, so come on in, send me a message, and hopefully I'll see you at a uh, craft fair. Thank you, guys. <laughs>
grab a dark brown with a softer tan color and I'm going to mix those two to get the color that I really really want on here I had I ended up adding more brown because the color that I had was not perfect and now I'm going to have a perfect perfect color for this and it's like a kind of like a chocolate brown it's really really nice and it blends in perfectly with the rest of the fabric I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the whole surface and I ended up painting the back as well I'm gonna go ahead and use the rest of my paint and I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the backing and the sides of my butterfly uh, that way we have a very beautiful and finished piece and we're gonna dry this off making sure that it's perfectly dried off now we're gonna attach it to our butterfly uh, wings and I'm gonna use some wood this is a like a wood it's just a very strong um, hold glue that I used on here kind of like a wood glue and I'm gonna grab some beautiful embellishments this is actually my favorite part of any of my creations and I'm gonna use some jewelry glue and I'm gonna glue this beautiful flower on here it's like a vintage piece that I got at an estate sale and you just can go as far as you want to take it when it comes to embellishments this is where we see you as a person come into your creations and uh, I think it's beautiful so I do like vintage pieces as you can see and then I'm gonna grab a different types of pearls that I have on here and I'm gonna cluster them together in some areas of my butterfly wings and I am also gonna use my jewelry glue for this and I'm gonna start sticking them on there they stick really really well and this does stay on forever I'm gonna cluster those right there and then I'm gonna cluster these on the left side they are gonna look beautiful and then I'm gonna end up clustering a little bit of a smaller pearl on top of the ones that I already have on here it's really really pretty I love it I ended up grabbing this piece it used to be a a necklace and it kind of has a hanging piece on it I used it on that too this kit does come with a wire for the antennas of your of your butterfly and so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some needle nose pliers and I'm going to um, just curl the top because that's gonna be my antennas but before I put them on here I decided to add a little bit more bling and went ahead and grabbed my pearl beads and just wrapped it inside of the wire just for that extra little little fancy factor it does come you know all my kits if I do have a wire on them they will come pre-drilled so you will see that on there I'm just attaching my antennas and it's looking really really beautiful I love it I hope you guys love it thank you Maria so much for having me I hope to see you guys at Lilexi Creations either on my Etsy shop or on my Facebook where I go live crafting with you guys as well thank you so much for having me Maria back to you all right now we have Chris Hunter coming up with creating with Chris Hunter thank you Maria Hello everybody, welcome to Creating with Chris Hunter. Today we're gonna do some handmade Valentine cards. Has it been a while since you've made a homemade Valentine card? I'm here to get you over the hump. So all you need is some different colored card stock, Valentine theme related. Uh, it can be printed, it can be plain. I've used both. Um, maybe some old book pages. I love to use old hymnal pages um, out of hymnals that we're going to be thrown away again. We're going to give them new life, love them all over again. You need that. You need some glitter glues. You need some different glitters. I have some mica flakes and I have some glitter here. Um, most of these things you can find around your house, especially if you're crafty. If not, most of them you can find at a dollar store or a big box store. You don't have to spend a lot of money to give a heartfelt homemade Valentine. So 
you can go on the internet and find these little vintage Valentines. I absolutely love these Valentines. And I went on and I found several of them. They're absolutely precious. They brought back such wonderful memories of the times that we used to do Valentines with our friends and take them to school and trade them. So I just thought that was a little special. I've already fussy cut some Valentines out. These are the two that we're going to be using. This one says, won't you string along with me, Valentine? And this one says, I'm nuts about you, Valentine. I just absolutely love these. I think they're darling. And what I do is I will use some ink and I will, I call it zhuzhing on my page. I zhuzh the edges. It just gives it a little bit more of a vintage feel. You can see that right there. Absolutely beautiful. And what I do next is I take some glitter glue. And I have already done some with some glitter so that they would be nice and dry. Look at this. Isn't it the cutest? So cute. I absolutely love these. So we'll put these to the side. We're going to use those. I cut some cardstock. This cardstock right here is going to be, let's measure this. This cardstock is going to be a five and a half by five and a half card. Easy. You cut 11 inches. So an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of cardstock, you get a card out of it. You cut 11 inches by five and a half inches, and there you have your card. There you have your card, right? Okay, I take a bone folder just to press those edges. It makes it cleaner and sharper. If you don't have a bone folder, you don't have to have a bone folder. Just use your fingernail. Use your fingernail along that edge, and that will give you a nice card. There you go. So we're going to set that to the side. What we did is we took three, and you can make this as long as you want. You can make this as long as you want. We took three hymnal, three pieces of hymnal pages. You can make them as big or as long as you want. This is one and a half inches. What we're going to do is... We're going to glue these end to end. Okay, we're going to make one long strip. I've just got some uh, regular white glue. This is a non-acetate glue. So I can use it in my journaling and scrapbooking. I have a page on Facebook. And um, I'm on all the other platforms under Creating with Chris Hunter. We do all kinds of paper crafts. We do all kinds of home decor. We cook. I cook lots of keto recipes. Um, it's really my passion is what I do on that page. I want to bring joy to everybody. So I hope you find some joy here. So I have glued these together. Okay. This makes one long strip. When I get that long strip, I'm going to fold it accordion style. This is what you're doing, okay? So I've already prepared one. You will come out with something looking like this, okay? You're going to stand this up on its side. You are going to bring it together like so and you're going to glue it together what you're going to do is you're going to push it together while you pull the top down Oop. push it together while you pull the top down you end up with what is a circle of accordion style. You can see that. We have to glue that down. That has to be glued down, right? So I take some cards, just scrap. I've already used these. I've used the paper. This was some scrap. I cut 
the cards and put some glue. I'm going to hold that right there. I have some trims. The trims are really fun to use. Any kind of trim, anything you have, um, and you don't even have to have a trim. I just wanted a little fluff behind mine. I think the strings will be amazing with the kitty cat that says, won't you string along with me? So I'm going to start around this glue circle, and I am going to glue this around the circle like so. This is what it will look like once you get it on the card, which doesn't look like much, but then you're going to take your little accordion style pinwheel. I'm going to move those strings from the center of that. I'm going to place this right in the middle. Okay, now we're going to place our valentine right in the center of this with, again, a good amount of glue. And this is our card. Look at how cute that is. Isn't it darling? You guys, you can make your own homemade Valentine cards. Also, we're going to go ahead and use the feathers. Let's do that. I'm going to make a circle for my feathers, right? Make a large circle. Okay. And I'm making a little bit thicker circle for the feathers just because I want them to stick on there really well. I love this. This is going to be so fun. Okay. We're going to put our circle of feathers on here. Then we're going to take the accordion folded wheel. You could even take a skewer and wrap a skewer in a ribbon and they could, I'm going to hold this up like this. You could put them in flowers. You could put them in flowers. You could put them in a jar of candy. So many things you can do with them. So And there you go. There is a card that can be used in some flowers, okay? So these are just some fun ideas for you to make Valentine's a little more special this year. Um, let's go back to making some homemade Valentine's, you guys. I absolutely love her. Isn't she beautiful? I hope you guys enjoyed this. Maria, thank you so much for having me. We're going back to Maria. May God bless you more than you deserve. Hey everybody, welcome to DIY and I. This is Maria with God Maria Herbal Crafting Chef. This is our first segment of our Kids Corner and I have with me Lisania. Lisania is going to make crepes for Valentine's Day. Lisania, how do you make the crepes? What do you use to make your crepes? Okay, so we're going to use um, a cup of milk. We use almond milk, half tablespoon of sugar, two eggs, two tablespoons of melted butter, and a cup of um, all-purpose flour and vanilla. Okay, and then how do you mix it up here? So we're all we're gonna mix all the ingredients together and okay. whisk them, or you can blend them. Okay, and so then, she's got that done, right? Yes. So we got that done. And, and this so this is, is what the, the consistency. And lasagna is great at making crepes, you guys. She makes them all the time. And then 
So you see what it looks like? Look at that. Okay, so then what do you do? You we're, put it in the pan? Yes, we're gonna put a little bit of it in the pan. You don't need that much. Make okay. sure the pan is hot and then you immediately start to... Rotate it? Yes. And then you wait until, how do you know when it's good to turn? Um, this should be a little bit brown on the edges and bubbly. Okay. And so when it's finished, it's going to look like this. Lasagna yes. made this one. And then what you can do, this is what she created, you guys. So usually people make them like they roll but them. You can roll them or fold them just like this. And you can add whatever fruit you want. We look added this, strawberries. This is amazing. And then we put in the, as a filling, we put some Nutella on it. So Nutella, whipped cream, strawberries. Now, if you look at this, it's ready. Look at that. Is it ready to turn or not yet? Um, we're not yet. Okay. So you guys can put this in the blender to mix it or just use a whisk, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, you guys, we used almond milk, uh, lasagna used almond milk, um, just because she feels it's healthier and she likes the taste better. You have one half of a tablespoon of sugar. You can also use monk fruit. And monk fruit is um, a certain type of sugar that does not raise your sugar index too high. So your GI, um, your glycemic index stays lower. So if you're diabetic, it's a little bit better to use. That's what they say. So you guys, nice, fresh, wholesome, healthy, sweet valentine um treat for your parents or your loved one or whatever thank you lasagna thank, thank you, you Maria. Thank okay you guys next up we have lydia from studio lydia bridget design take it away lydia thank you maria for having me hello and welcome welcome everybody my name is Lydia Bridget Scaniff. I am the founder, director, and creator artist at Studio Lydia Bridget Design. I am also a singer and a songwriter. I have written my first song and it will be released this Resurrection Sunday, March 31st, 2024. I am really excited about it. Um, and here at Studio Lydia Bridget Design, I like to recycle random things and turn them into beautiful works of art. Today, I'd like to show you how to make a Fabergé egg in a very simple way. It'll be awesome, you'll love it. So first, you will need a paper mache egg, some glue for the molds, a brush, some air dry clay, blingy brooch with the backing cut off, a metal flower, some metallic paint, and your molds of your choice. I went ahead and prepared the molds already. And what I do is, I usually rest my egg on a can of some sort. Just go around and position your molds all the way around whichever way you like and then glue them. And after you've done that, you will have something like this. And we will take the metallic paint and brush it all over, two coats, and let it dry. And after it's dry, I apply the beautiful blingy brooch at the top and the metallic flower at the bottom. And when all said and done, you will have this beauty right here. And it looks just like this. Just beautiful. Resting on a beautiful tray with some greens around it. Beautiful centerpiece. And um, I love to do things like this. So anyway, now I want to tell you all things are possible if you believe. God bless you all. Back to you, Maria.
right, everybody. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you, everybody, for participating. And next week, we're going to have Kathy Domenico and Lydia on the main feature and many more creators. So join us. And now it is time for our closing segment and closing prayer with Pastor Isaiah. All right. Thank you, Isaiah. Hi. Today's topic is entitled Spending Time with God. I want to look at a scripture from Psalm 62, verse 8, which reads, Trust in, lean on, rely on, and have confidence in him at all times. You people, pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us. One of the things that people often encounter is problems with hearing from God. And one of the reasons why we have problems hearing from God is because we're not spending enough time with God. God is a very active God who cares about our minute, small details of life. And one of the things that we have got to learn to do is to pour out all things to him, meaning how we feel, what's going on. He knows these things already, but the act of us pouring out these things before him is how we get closer to him. It's how we know him and it's how we get used to his voice and where he is trying to lead us. Trusting in, leaning on and relying on and have confidence in is our words that bring us an air of intimacy meaning you trust in, rely on, lean on, and have confidence in somebody that you know. And God wants us to know him on an intimate level, and that means you have to start your day off right. That means when you get up in the morning, you've got to read, you've got to pray, you've got to speak to him, but you can do that throughout all of your day. We spend time with God on a consistent basis because it makes him become more real to us. And when God is more real to us, we know that he's there and he is around us at all times. You'd be surprised at how that affects our behavior when we know he's right there at all times. He's looking at us, listening to us, watching us. He's experiencing all the moments that we experience. It changes the way you look at God and how he speaks and interacts with us. So I want you to start and begin to practice God's presence and practicing God's presence means before you speak, before you act, think of it as God standing right next to you when you're by yourself, when you're in a crowd, when you're doing your daily things, think of him as being right next to you and think of him as having an opinion on everything you do and say, and I promise you that will start to change the way that you see God, the way that you experience God. When you start to acknowledge that he is there all the time, you will start to feel him and you will see that he speaks to you in a multitude of ways. I want to say a prayer in closing, and that is, Father, we just thank you that you are able to speak with us. We thank you, Father, that you have our best interests at heart, we thank you that through your word and through your many, many different avenues, the Holy Spirit speaks to us in all things. Everything can be brought to your feet. Everything can be brought into your courtroom. Everything can be brought to your presence because you want to hear us and you want to know what we have to say. And you always speak back. We thank you for this. And we thank you for the blessings that your son has bestowed upon us in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for watching the show. I'm Pastor Isaiah from New Hope Fellowship, 781 West Street in Pahrump.